This is Reed Daly's Come Follow Me podcast. In this podcast series, lesson and scripture audio are combined for a hands-free experience. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. At the end of this podcast, you can hear our full disclosure statement or read it on readdaily.live. March 22nd through the 28th, Doctrine and Covenants, Section 29. Jesus Christ will gather His people. One of the purposes of studying the Scriptures is to learn doctrine or gospel truths that are essential for our salvation. As you study Doctrine and Covenants section 29 this week, look for doctrinal insights that are meaningful to you. Even though the Church of Jesus Christ had been organized in 1830, many gospel truths were still to be revealed, and several early church members had questions. They had read prophecies in the Book of Mormon about the gathering of Israel and the building up of Zion. See 3 Nephi chapter 21. How would that happen? The revelations Hiram Page claimed to receive addressed that subject, which only increased members' curiosity. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 28. Other people wondered about the fall of Adam and Eve and spiritual death. The Lord welcomed these questions in 1830. Whatsoever ye shall ask in faith, he told the saints, being united in prayer according to my command, ye shall receive. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verse 6. And he welcomes our questions today. He's just waiting for us to ask him in prayer. In fact, as the doctrinally rich revelation in Doctrine and Covenants section 29 shows, he sometimes responds by imparting truth and knowledge beyond the questions we asked in the first place. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study Doctrine and Covenants section 29 Heavenly Father prepared the perfect plan for our exaltation. Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, teaches many truths about God's plan for His children. As you read, look for truths you learn about each of the following parts of the plan. Premortal life. See verses 36 through 37. And it came to pass that Adam, being tempted of the devil, for behold, the devil was before Adam, for he rebelled against me, saying, Give me thine honor which is my power. And also a third part of the hosts of heaven turned he away from me because of their agency. And they were thrust down, and thus came the devil and his angels. Creation. See verses 31 through 33. For by the power of my Spirit created I them, yea, all things both spiritual and temporal. First spiritual, secondly temporal, which is the beginning of my work, and again, first temporal, and secondly spiritual, which is the last of my work, speaking unto you that you may naturally understand, but unto myself my works have no end, neither beginning, but it is given unto you that ye may understand, because ye have asked it of me, and are agreed. The Fall of Adam and Eve, see verses 40-41. through 41. Wherefore it came to pass that the devil tempted Adam, and he partook of the forbidden fruit, and transgressed the commandment, wherein he became subject to the will of the devil, because he yielded unto temptation. Wherefore I, the Lord God, caused that he should be cast out from the garden of Eden from my presence, because of his transgression, wherein he became spiritually dead, which is the first death, even that same death which is the last death, which is spiritual which shall be pronounced upon the wicked when I shall say, Depart, ye cursed. Mortal Life See verses 39 and 42 through 45 And it must needs be that the devil should tempt the children of men, or they could not be agents unto themselves. For if they never should have bitter, they could not know the sweet. But behold, I say unto you that I, the Lord God, gave unto Adam and unto his seed 
that they should not die as to the temporal death, until I, the Lord God, should send forth angels to declare unto them repentance and redemption, through faith on the name of mine only begotten Son. And thus did I, the Lord God, appoint unto man the days of his probation, that by his natural death he might be raised in immortality unto eternal life, even as many as would believe. And they that believe not unto eternal damnation, for they cannot be redeemed from their spiritual fall, because they repent not. For they love darkness rather than light, and their deeds are evil, and they receive their wages of whom they list to obey. The Atonement of Jesus Christ See verses 1, 42 through 43, and 46 through 50. Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, the great I Am, whose arm of mercy hath atoned for your sins. But behold, I say unto you that I, the Lord God, gave unto Adam and unto his seed, that they should not die as to the temporal death, until I, the Lord God, should send forth angels to declare unto them repentance and redemption through faith on the name of mine only begotten Son. And thus did I, the Lord God, appoint unto man the days of his probation, that by his natural death he might be raised in immortality unto eternal life, even as many as would believe. But behold, I say unto you, that little children are redeemed from the foundation of the world through mine only begotten. Wherefore they cannot sin, for power is not given unto Satan to tempt little children, until they begin to become accountable before me. For it is given unto them, even as I will, according to mine own pleasure, that great things may be required at the hand of their fathers. And again I say unto you, that whoso having knowledge have I not commanded to repent, and he that hath no understanding, it remaineth in me to do according as it is written. And now I declare no more unto you at this time. Amen. The Resurrection See verses 13 and 26 For a trump shall sound both long and loud, even as upon Mount Sinai, and all the earth shall quake, and they shall come forth, yea, even the dead, which died in me, to receive a crown of righteousness, and to be clothed upon, even as I am, to be with me, that we may be one. But behold, verily I say unto you, Before the earth shall pass away, Michael, mine archangel, shall sound his trump, and then shall all the dead awake, for their graves shall be opened, and they shall come forth, yea, even all. The Final Judgment See verses 12 through 13 and 27 through 30. And again, verily, verily, I say unto you, and it hath gone forth in a firm decree by the will of the Father, that mine apostles, the twelve which were with me in my ministry at Jerusalem, shall stand at my right hand at the day of my coming in a pillar of fire being clothed with robes of righteousness, with crowns upon their heads, in glory, even as I am, to judge the whole house of Israel, even as many as have loved me and kept my commandments, and none else. For a trump shall sound both long and loud, even as upon Mount Sinai, and all the earth shall quake, and they shall come forth, yea, even the dead which died in me, to receive a crown of righteousness, and to be clothed upon, even as I am, to be with me, that we may be one. And the righteous shall be gathered on my right hand unto eternal life, and the wicked on my left hand will I be ashamed to own before the Father. Wherefore I will say unto them, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And now, behold, I say unto you, Never at any time have I declared from mine own mouth that they should return, for where I am they cannot come, for they have no power. But remember that all my judgments are not given unto men, 
And as the words have gone forth out of my mouth, even so shall they be fulfilled, that the first shall be last, and that the last shall be first in all things whatsoever I have created by the word of my power, which is the power of my Spirit. What new insights did you gain? How would your life be different if you didn't know about these truths? You can study more about Heavenly Father's plan in the Plan of Salvation from Preach My Gospel, A Guide to Missionary Service, 2018. churchofjesuschrist.org slash manual slash missionary. Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verses 1 through 8. Jesus Christ will gather His people before His second coming. Jesus Christ speaks of gathering his people as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verse 2. Who will gather his people even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, even as many as will hearken to my voice and humble themselves before me and call upon me in mighty prayer. What does this image teach you about the Savior's desire to gather you? As you read Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verses 1 through 8, look for insights about why we gather, who will gather, and how we can help gather the elect. See verse 7. Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, the great I Am, whose arm of mercy hath atoned for your sins who will gather his people even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, even as many as will hearken to my voice and humble themselves before me, and call upon me in mighty prayer. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, that at this time your sins are forgiven you. Therefore ye receive these things, but remember to sin no more, lest perils shall come upon you. Verily, I say unto you, that ye are chosen out of the world to declare my gospel with the sound of rejoicing, as with the voice of a trump. Lift up your hearts and be glad, for I am in your midst and am your advocate with the Father, and it is His good will to give you the kingdom. And as it is written, Whatsoever ye shall ask in faith, being united in prayer according to my command, ye shall receive, and ye are called to bring to pass the gathering of mine elect. For mine elect hear my voice, and harden not their hearts. Wherefore the decree hath gone forth from the Father, that they shall be gathered in unto one place upon the face of this land, to prepare their hearts, and be prepared in all things against the day, when tribulation and desolation are sent forth upon the wicked. In our day, gathering to Zion means uniting in stakes of Zion around the world. How does gathering as saints help us be prepared in all things for the tribulations that will come before the Savior's second coming? See verse 8. Wherefore the decree hath gone forth from the Father, that they shall be gathered in unto one place upon the face of this land, to prepare their hearts and be prepared in all things against the day when tribulation and desolation are sent forth upon the wicked. See also verses 14 through 28. But behold, I say unto you that before this great day shall come, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall be turned into blood, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and there shall be greater signs in heaven above and in the earth beneath, and there shall be weeping and wailing among the hosts of men, and there shall be a great hailstorm sent forth to destroy the crops of the earth. And it shall come to pass, because of the wickedness of the world, that I will take vengeance upon the wicked, for they will not repent. For the cup of mine indignation is full. For behold, my blood shall not cleanse them, if they hear me not. Wherefore I, the Lord God, will send forth flies upon the face of the earth, which shall take hold of the inhabitants thereof, and shall eat their flesh, and shall cause maggots to come in upon them. And their tongues shall be stayed, that they shall not utter against me and their flesh shall fall from off their bones, and their eyes from their sockets. And it shall come to pass that the beasts of the forest and the fowls of the air shall devour them up. And the great and abominable church, which is the whore of all the earth, shall be cast down by devouring fire, according as it is spoken by the mouth of Ezekiel the prophet. 
who spoke of these things, which have not come to pass, but surely must, as I live, for abomination shall not reign. And again, verily, verily, I say unto you that when the thousand years are ended, and men again begin to deny their God, then will I spare the earth but for a little season. And the end shall come, and the heaven and the earth shall be consumed and pass away, and there shall be a new heaven and a new earth. For all old things shall pass away, and all things shall become new, even the heaven and the earth, and all the fullness thereof, both men and beasts, the fowls of the air and the fishes of the sea. And not one hair, neither moat, shall be lost, for it is the workmanship of mine hand. But behold, verily I say unto you, Before the earth shall pass away, Michael, mine archangel, shall sound his trump, and then shall all the dead awake. For their graves shall be opened, and they shall come forth, yea, even all. And the righteous shall be gathered on my right hand unto eternal life, and the wicked on my left hand will I be ashamed to own before the Father. Wherefore I will say unto them, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See also Articles of Faith, chapter 1, verse 10. We believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the ten tribes, that Zion, the new Jerusalem, will be built upon the American continent, that Christ will reign personally upon the earth, and that the earth will be renewed and receive its paradisaical glory. Russell M. Nelson and Wendy W. Nelson, Hope of Israel, Worldwide Devotional for Youth, June 3, 2018, churchofjesuschrist.org. Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verses 31 through 35. All things unto me are spiritual. For by the power of my Spirit created I them, yea, all things both spiritual and temporal. First spiritual, secondly temporal, which is the beginning of my work. And again, first temporal, and secondly spiritual, which is the last of my work. Speaking unto you that you may naturally understand, but unto myself my works have no end, neither beginning. But it is given unto you that ye may understand, because ye have asked it of me, and are agreed. Wherefore verily I say unto you, that all things unto me are spiritual, and not at any time have I given unto you a law which was temporal, neither any man, nor the children of men, neither Adam your father, whom I created. Behold, I gave unto him that he should be an agent unto himself, and I gave unto him commandment. But no temporal commandment gave I unto him, for my commandments are spiritual. They are not natural nor temporal, neither carnal nor sensual. In what sense are all commandments spiritual? What does knowing that all commandments are spiritual teach you about the purpose of commandments? You might list a few commandments and consider the spiritual principles related to each one. What might change if you looked for spiritual meaning or purpose in your everyday tasks, even those that seem temporal or mundane? See also Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And 1 Nephi chapter 15, verses 30 through 32. And I said unto them, that our Father also saw that the justice of God did also divide the wicked from the righteous. And the brightness thereof was like unto the brightness of a flaming fire, which ascendeth up unto God for ever and ever, and hath no end. And they said unto me, Doth this thing mean the torment of the body in the days of probation? Or doth it mean the final state of the soul after the death of the temporal body? Or doth it speak of the things which are temporal? And it came to pass that I said unto them that it was a representation of things both temporal and spiritual. For the day should come that they must be judged of their works, yea, even the works which were done by the temporal body in their days of probation. Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verses 36 through 50. 
Jesus Christ redeems us from the fall. This revelation opens with the Lord introducing himself as our Redeemer, who has atoned for our sins. See verse 1. Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, the great I Am, whose arm of mercy hath atoned for your sins. The revelation goes on to explain some of the reasons we need a Redeemer. Consider how you would use verses 36 through 50 to explain why we need redemption through the Savior Jesus Christ. And it came to pass that Adam, being tempted of the devil, for behold, the devil was before Adam, for he rebelled against me, saying, Give me thine honor, which is my power. And also a third part of the hosts of heaven turned he away from me because of their agency. And they were thrust down, And thus came the devil and his angels. And behold, there is a place prepared for them from the beginning, which place is hell. And it must needs be that the devil should tempt the children of men, or they could not be agents unto themselves. For if they never should have bitter, they could not know the sweet. Wherefore it came to pass that the devil tempted Adam, and he partook of the forbidden fruit, and transgressed the commandment, wherein he became subject to the will of the devil, because he yielded unto temptation. Wherefore I, the Lord God, caused that he should be cast out from the garden of Eden from my presence, because of his transgression, wherein he became spiritually dead, which is the first death, even that same death which is the last death, which is spiritual, which shall be pronounced upon the wicked when I shall say, Depart, ye cursed. But behold, I say unto you that I, the Lord God, gave unto Adam and unto his seed, that they should not die as to the temporal death, until I, the Lord God, should send forth angels to declare unto them repentance and redemption, through faith on the name of mine only begotten Son. And thus did I, the Lord God, appoint unto man the days of his probation, that by his natural death he might be raised in immortality unto eternal life even as many as would believe. And they that believe not unto eternal damnation, for they cannot be redeemed from their spiritual fall, because they repent not. For they love darkness rather than light, and their deeds are evil, and they receive their wages of whom they list to obey. But behold, I say unto you, that little children are redeemed from the foundation of the world through mine only begotten. Wherefore they cannot sin, For power is not given unto Satan to tempt little children, until they begin to become accountable before me. For it is given unto them, even as I will, according to mine own pleasure, that great things may be required at the hand of their fathers. And again I say unto you, that whoso having knowledge have I not commanded to repent, and he that hath no understanding, it remaineth in me to do according as it is written. And now I declare no more unto you at this time. Amen. In many faith traditions, the fall is seen as a tragedy. What do you find in these verses that teaches the positive results of the fall? See also 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 2 Nephi chapter 2 verses 6 through 8 and 15 through 29. Wherefore, redemption cometh in and through the holy Messiah, for he is full of grace and truth. Behold, he offereth himself a sacrifice for sin, to answer the ends of the law unto all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and unto none else can the ends of the law be answered. Wherefore, how great the importance to make these things known unto the inhabitants of the earth, that they may know that there is no flesh that can dwell in the presence of God, save it be through the merits and mercy and grace of the Holy Messiah, who layeth down his life according to the flesh, and taketh it again by the power of the Spirit, that he may bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, being the first that should rise. and to bring about his eternal purposes in the end of man, 
after he had created our first parents, and the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air, and in fine, all things which are created, it must needs be that there was an opposition, even the forbidden fruit in opposition to the tree of life, the one being sweet and the other bitter. Wherefore, the Lord God gave unto man that he should act for himself. Wherefore, man could not act for himself, save it should be that he was enticed by the one or the other. And I, Lehi, according to the things which I have read, must needs suppose that an angel of God, according to that which is written, had fallen from heaven, wherefore he became a devil, having sought that which was evil before God. And because he had fallen from heaven, and had become miserable forever, he sought also the misery of all mankind. Wherefore he said unto Eve, Yea, even that old serpent, who is the devil, who is the father of all lies, wherefore he said, Partake of the forbidden fruit, and ye shall not die, but ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And after Adam and Eve had partaken of the forbidden fruit, they were driven out of the garden of Eden to till the earth. And they have brought forth children, yea, even the family of all the earth. And the days of the children of men were prolonged, according to the will of God, that they might repent while in the flesh. Wherefore, their state became a state of probation, and their time was lengthened, according to the commandments which the Lord God gave unto the children of men. For he gave commandment that all men must repent. For he showed unto all men that they were lost because of the transgression of their parents. And now, behold, if Adam had not transgressed, he would not have fallen, but he would have remained in the garden of Eden. And all things which were created must have remained in the same state in which they were after they were created, and they must have remained forever and had no end. And they would have had no children, wherefore they would have remained in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew no misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. But behold, all things have been done in the wisdom of him who knoweth all things. Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. And the Messiah cometh in the fullness of time, that he may redeem the children of men from the fall. And because that they are redeemed from the fall, they have become free forever, knowing good from evil, to act for themselves and not to be acted upon, save it be by the punishment of the law at the great and last day, according to the commandments which God hath given. Wherefore, men are free according to the flesh, and all things are given them which are expedient unto man. And they are free to choose liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men, or to choose captivity and death according to the captivity and power of the devil. For he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. And now, my sons, I would that ye should look to the great mediator and hearken unto his great commandments, and be faithful unto his words, and choose eternal life according to the will of his Holy Spirit, and not choose eternal death according to the will of the flesh and the evil which is therein, which giveth the spirit of the devil power to captivate, to bring you down to hell, that he may reign over you in his own kingdom. Mosiah chapter 3 verses 1 through 19 and again, my brethren, I would call your attention, for I have somewhat more to speak unto you. For behold, I have things to tell you concerning that which is to come. And the things which I shall tell you are made known unto me by an angel from God. And he said unto me, Awake. And I awoke, and behold, he stood before me. And he said unto me, Awake, and hear the words which I shall tell thee. For behold, I am come to declare unto you the glad tidings of great joy. For the Lord hath heard thy prayers, and hath judged of thy righteousness, and hath sent me to declare unto thee that thou mayest rejoice, and that thou mayest declare unto thy people that they may also be filled with joy. For behold, the time cometh, and is not far distant, 
that with power the Lord Omnipotent who reigneth, who was and is from all eternity to all eternity, shall come down from heaven among the children of men, and shall dwell in the tabernacle of clay, and shall go forth amongst men, working mighty miracles, such as healing the sick, raising the dead, causing the lame to walk, the blind to receive their sight, and the deaf to hear, and curing all manner of diseases. And he shall cast out devils, or the evil spirits which dwell in the hearts of the children of men. And lo, he shall suffer temptations, and pain of body, hunger, thirst, and fatigue, even more than man can suffer, except it be unto death. For behold, blood cometh from every pore, so great shall be his anguish for the wickedness and the abominations of his people. And he shall be called Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and earth, the Creator of all things from the beginning. And his mother shall be called Mary. And lo, he cometh unto his own, that salvation might come unto the children of men, even through faith on his name. And even after all this, they shall consider him a man, and say that he hath a devil, and shall scourge him, and shall crucify him. And he shall rise the third day from the dead. And behold, he standeth to judge the world. And behold, all these things are done, that a righteous judgment might come upon the children of men. For behold, and also his blood atoneth for the sins of those who have fallen by the transgression of Adam, who have died not knowing the will of God concerning them, or who have ignorantly sinned. But woe, woe unto him that knoweth that he rebelleth against God. For salvation cometh to none such, except it be through repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord God hath sent his holy prophets among all the children of men, to declare these things to every kindred, nation, and tongue, that thereby whosoever should believe that Christ should come, the same might receive remission of their sins, and rejoice with exceedingly great joy, even as though he had already come among them. Yet the Lord God saw that his people were a stiff-necked people, and he appointed unto them a law, even the law of Moses. And many signs and wonders and types and shadows showed he unto them concerning his coming. And also holy prophets spake unto them concerning his coming, and yet they hardened their hearts, and understood not that the law of Moses availeth nothing, except it were through the atonement of his blood. And even if it were possible that little children could sin, they could not be saved. But I say unto you, They are blessed. For behold, as in Adam, or by nature they fall, even so the blood of Christ atoneth for their sins. And moreover I say unto you, that there shall be no other name given, nor any other way nor means whereby salvation can come unto the children of men, only in and through the name of Christ, the Lord Omnipotent. For behold, he judgeth, and his judgment is just, and the infant perisheth not that dieth in his infancy. But men drink damnation to their own souls, except they humble themselves and become as little children and believe that salvation was and is and is to come in and through the atoning blood of Christ, the Lord Omnipotent. For the natural man is an enemy to God, and has been from the fall of Adam and will be for ever and ever, unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, and putteth off the natural man, and becometh a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord, and becometh as a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him, even as a child doth submit to his father. And Moses chapter 5 verses 9 through 12 And in that day the Holy Ghost fell upon Adam, which beareth record of the Father and the Son, saying, I am the only begotten of the Father from the beginning, henceforth and forever, that as thou hast fallen, thou mayest be redeemed, and all mankind, even as many as will. And in that day Adam blessed God, and was filled, 
and began to prophesy concerning all the families of the earth, saying, Blessed be the name of God, for because of my transgression my eyes are opened, and in this life I shall have joy, and again in the flesh I shall see God. And Eve his wife heard all these things and was glad, saying, Were it not for our transgression, we never should have had seed, and never should have known good and evil, and the joy of our redemption, and the eternal life which God giveth unto all the obedient. And Adam and Eve blessed the name of God, and they made all things known unto their sons and their daughters. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Home Evening Doctrine and Covenants, Section 29 You could use the images at the end of this outline along with Doctrine and Covenants, Section 29, to teach your family about the plan of salvation. For example, family members could learn about different parts of the plan by reading and discussing the verses suggested. They could find additional truths in Gospel Topics, topics topics.churchofjesuschrist.org, or the Guide to the Scriptures, scriptures scriptures.churchofjesuschrist.org. Write down what you learn. Why are we thankful to know about the plan of salvation? How does knowing about it influence our everyday lives? Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verse 2 and 7 through 8. What does it mean to be gathered by the Savior? How can we help Him gather the elect? Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verses 3 through 5. What do we learn about the Savior in these verses that helps us lift up our hearts and be glad? See verse 5. The video We Can Find Happiness, churchofjesuschrist.org, could help you discuss how knowing about the plan of salvation has brought your family happiness. Doctrine and Covenants, section 29, verses 34 through 35. Reading these verses could give your family an opportunity to talk about the spiritual reasons behind some of the commandments or prophetic counsel you are trying to follow. For example, why does the Lord want us to read the scriptures as a family? What spiritual benefits have we seen from keeping the commandments? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Suggested song, Israel, Israel, God is Calling, hymns number 7. Improving our teaching. Look for Jesus Christ. The scriptures teach us that all of God's creations testify of Jesus Christ. See Moses chapter 6 verses 62 through 63. So look for him as you read the scriptures. Consider noting or marking verses that teach about him. Thank you for listening to Read Daily's Come Follow Me podcast. Please share this podcast with family members and friends who can find us on readdaily.live or their favorite podcast application. The Intellectual Property Department of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity Along with granting permission, they ask that we make the following statement. Any products offered by ReadDaily.Live are neither made, provided, approved, nor endorsed by Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any content or opinions expressed, implied, or included with any goods or services offered by ReadDaily.Live are solely those of Howard Patrick Holman and not those of Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.